how impressed were you with uh, the Torrance's debut, not only with the fact that it was game one on the road, the, the defensive line you played against, but then you also asked him to, to handle the final count uh, responsibility as well. Yeah, I, I, I have a lot of uh, admiration for how he did. I remember my first game and how I felt as a rookie and uh, to have that on the road, on the road versus that defense on 9-11 in New York City, I mean, or New Jersey rather. Um, I thought he did a very good job and, and, and set himself up for a lot of success in the future as, as long as we build on that. Um, I think you ask him or any of us, there's still a lot of work to do. But uh, really, I mean, just I think the big thing that was not seen was his communication. Um, not only was he doing sign count, but he was communicating. He wasn't afraid as a rookie to talk. And sometimes you get that in those big moments. It's not their fault or anyone's fault. It's just how you, how you feel or, you know, there's so much going on. It seems like you forget to say stuff or relay info. But uh, he did a very good job of, you know, staying on track, doing what he had to do. Sean talked about it yesterday. He kind of smiled. He said, we, we sort of threw him in there. You know, like a baptism by fire type totally. situation. But when you, I don't know, you remember your first game and that sort of thing. When you have that talent, how valuable is it to just kind of get that experience? It's almost like a sink or swim type situation. Yeah, um, yeah. How, how, how much does that help with his development, I guess, is, is from your perspective? Yeah, I mean, you, it's, it's paramount to development. Having the opportunity to go out there in those environments, those live actions and Go when the stakes are at their highest and the competition's at its highest to be asked to uh, not only compete but to uh, you know but to win a block or and, and come out successful. So um, it's it's it was huge for his development. I think it was huge uh, for his confidence and uh, you know he knows it's a long season as we all do. So for us, um, it's compounding those and finding ways to get better, which we all have the opportunity to do this kind of next week and. Compete. Mitch, how unique is that, the silent count responsibility? I know the right guard handled it a lot in this league, mm -hmm. but, you know, Torrance said that the left guard did it in college. You know, to be able to, to take that on, how, how difficult is it? Is it a small thing or is it? Um, I, I think it's just a thousand, it takes thousands of reps. And, uh, you know, we had the, f the fortunate opportunity to play on the road the last two preseason games. And this first game, so we had three or four weeks to practice that silent count. And uh, so I think when you have that opportunity to do that, it becomes not so much second nature, but less of a stressor, you know. And, uh, you know, he, it's just what we do here. We ask him to do that, and, and he rose to the occasion. You've been around Josh as much as anybody. What do you tell him? Because he said one of the things that really helps him is, like, when a teammate leans on a teammate. Mm. Bad performance, they come up and they just watch and forget about it. Totally. What do you? Does your message change to him at all? What do you say after he has a game like that? Because he is the the leader in a lot of things. Yeah, I, I think um, no one's a harsher critic on themselves than Josh Allen is, right? So, um, for us, it's just if he needs us there, we'll be there. If he doesn't and he wants to process it himself, he can do that. Like it's for us, it's just being there for in whatever capacity he needs and. Uh, you know, being around him for a while, you can kind of gauge what that is. Um, but no one's more anxious to get out there and, you know, compete against a very good defense this Sunday more than Josh. Mitch, how did you feel the communication with Josh was uh, during the game on Monday? I thought it was good. Yeah, I thought it was uh, – I, th I thought communication for the most part was great. Um, you know, for all of us, it's just, uh, you know – I think executing. I can only speak for the offensive line, but the communication was there, but sometimes we didn't follow through on it. So uh, for that, we'll just tighten that up and get better every week. There has to be a, a trust there between Josh and what you guys are doing up front. Um, it, I think part of that trust, I would have to think, you know, comes from the communication. When you went back and watched the game, you know, did you, you, you mentioned execution there. Mm -hmm. um, how often do you feel like that maybe wasn't to the level that it needed to be? Oh man, I, I think it you know, uh, you know, it was at the most inopportune moments, and it happens like that is when you're relied to execute at the highest level. Is sometimes when uh, you know you can get outside of yourself, no matter what position you are. I can speak for myself, right? When you're when you're when you're thinking too much on the moment, 
you you forget about what that moment entails and, and what's needed out of you personally uh, as an offensive line. I think um, we just take it as it comes. I think that was a great learning experience for all of us, and uh, we know what we need to tighten up, and, and now it's just doing it. Mitch, you spoke last week about you know, staying where your feet are, and that's kind of the mantra for the captains. Um, how does that message resonate this week after kind of the disappointing uh, game last week? That's a good question. I think, I mean, when you ride, this league wants you to ride the ebbs and flows, right? It's the highs are, you know, incredibly high and the lows are devastatingly low. Um, it's hard not to ride the roller coaster, right? So for us, it's just understanding that it wasn't all for naught this past weekend. There are some stuff we can, we can look back and, and hang our hat on. Uh, but we got to carry that over and then some, and then fix the stuff that we just can't happen, right? So um, what does that mean? Today is our third down day. So what does that mean? I'm, right now I'm focused on this rep and this team period of third down, and then you compound those moments every day, and then lo and behold, you're there on Sunday, and you've, you've done a whole week of work and a whole week of preparation, and, uh, and you have something to hang your hat on. Uh, yeah, when, when I don't notice you in the huddle, that's a good thing. Um, I, it's actually kind of a funny story. We're, we're driving on the drive. We're in the same bus on the way to the stadium. And when you drive through MetLife, you know, the, the, the Jets fans are, um, they, they, they make it known that they're there and they d disapprove of your presence. And, uh, I mean, one of them chucked a beer can as hard as they could. And if, if the window wasn't there, it would have hit me right in the face. And uh, I look over and Dalton's just kind of looking at me. And, uh, and I was like, yeah, that's, this is the NFL, pal. Like, it's not, uh, it's not the most welcoming environment. But, um, you know, and he, he, he laughed and kind of get right, right back into his. So that, I think that the long story short was that kind of set the tone for that was that moment. And then he was on to the next thing that was necessary for him to do. And I think he did that talking about compounding moments in time. He did that for the whole afternoon. And I think much like Osiris has a lot to hang his hat on and build on for the following weeks and season. You mentioned the Raiders defense. What impresses you about that? Man, I think, uh, well, I mean, that, you know, Max Crosby is, is unbelievable. He's just he's a phenomenal football player. And, um, not only is this effort, I mean, if you look at play one to the last play, you really can't tell a difference in his speed and, and his relentlessness into the football. Um, and not only that, he's just got every tool in the book. And, and then when you look along that defensive line, I, I think in that front seven, the linebackers are, you know, are thumpers and they trigger fast and they read their keys and they trust it and they want to take you off of double teams. And um, they can be very multiple at times, or, or you know, it, it can, they can rise the defense rises the occasion that's necessary, and they can be very multiple at times. So, um, and I think for that whole defense, they play with uh, a relentless attitude of, of attacking the their opponent. So for us, much like last week, it'll just be rising the occasion of that competitive edge that they have, and um, along with that, trying to execute at the highest level. All the pop and circumstance along on Monday is going to matter. Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's a double-edged sword coming on a short week, right? Like, you know, you, you're, you're racing against the clock to get your rest, but at the same time, we want to get this bad taste out of our mouth. But the last thing we want to do is rush into something and, and, and come out being like, well, we just rushed to this game and we didn't do everything necessary to um, compete or, you know, at our highest level because we're going to need to do that and execute if we, uh, we want to be in this thing on Sunday.